Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Second Marai. And I want to talk today about pubalgia or pain down in the pubic region. We had a couple patients from the same day, and one of them had a hip, the other had a pelvis, and both of them had pubic related changes here. So I'm going to show these two cases. So this is one, this is a soccer player, and they had continued pain in the deep pelvis. And on this view here, we can see the pubic symphysis right here in the middle, the right pubic bone, left pubic bone, and you can see on these stir images that there's very bright signal on both sides of the pubic bone, worse on the right hand side. And this is what they call osteitis pubis from um, shearing forces and increased stress on both sides of the symphysis pubis. So that is one finding, but if we look a little bit closer, there's one other finding here on the left. Uh, so along the undersurface here we have the adductor longus tendon comes up and attaches here and there's a common tendon and the tendon from the bottom is the adductor longus and along the top is the rectus abdominis and they come together and have, broad, and have a broad association with the pubic symphysis and on top here and then down underneath and towards the front and underneath here on the left hand side there's a little bit of asymmetry right over here they call this a secondary cleft sign. You have a primary cleft in the middle and you can have sometimes a cleft that shoots off to the side like this and this is a partial tear at the um, junction between the periosteum and this um, aponeurosis here and you can see that there's a little transverse band of brightness here. So this patient had two things. Again, one, the osteitis pubis, this reactive marrow signal changes, a little cortical defect here related to the, um, con the chronic injury and also this other little finding here where you had the uh, periosteal injury at the aponeurotic attachment there on the left. And again, the adductor longus comes up there and attaches from the bottom, and then the rectus abdominis comes across from the top. Now, I had another patient the same day. He had no history of injury, but he did have constant pain in his left hip and pain radiating down into the left testicle area. And so we did an MRI of the hip, and we also did this large field of view that showed both sides. And we can see right here this primary cleft and then it goes down here on the left hand side underneath that aponeurotic attachment. So I'm going to zoom on up here. So on the right hand side, this is nice normal. You can see that dark attachment right there, the periosteal attachment. And on the left hand side here, you see this vertical band of hyperintense signal. And it goes all the way down towards the left here and then underneath. And so that uh, aponeurosis is partially stripped and torn up slightly from the bone there. There's no reactive marrow edema like on the other patient. This is just another classic finding here of athletic pubalgia. And I say that because they probably do have history of a sports related um, injury. We didn't get that injury, just said constant pain, but typically these patients have some abnormal mechanics of stress that's constant and repetitive on that. And so here's another view we did in the left hip. This is a low field MRI scanner. You can see over here how well you can see this nice vertical primary cleft going there into the secondary cleft and then here along the undersurface, a little bit of brightness here. Now this is the axial view of the same patient. You can see that linear fluid signal in the symphysis pubis, primary cleft, and if we go anteriorly here, this is the rectus abdominis aponeurosis. Here's the muscle here coming down to the tendon. Now the tendon gets thin, it attaches right there, and we can see on the right-hand side a little focus, which is abnormal, on the right. And on the left-hand side, if we come down a little bit further, we can see that this primary cleft goes forward, up around and so this is not just down at the adductor attachment but also at this attachment uh, more anteriorly and superiorly which is the rectus abdominis. So that is it. The common aponeurosis is partially torn at the rectus and the adductor longus attachments. There's really prominent primary cleft here but no reactive marrow signal changes. So thank you very much.